Rockport, Massachusetts is a tiny New England coastal community that has long been home to fishermen and artists. The town is also home to what is said to be America's most painted building, a red shack perched at the end of Bradley Wharf in the center of the town's snug inner harbor. Originally built in the mid-1800s to store fishing gear, by 1900, the building became a frequent subject of painters who had begun to summer here. Thanks to artist Lester Hornby, in the 1930s, the humble shack acquired the rather imposing name it's still known by today, Motif No. 1. Hornby was an American who spent much of his career in France, where to paint sur le motif meant to paint out of doors. Later in life, Hornby taught art in Rockport, and after a series of pupils made the shack the subject of their work, he is said to have exclaimed, Motif No. 1? Again? The word motif officially entered the English language in 1848, about the time when Rockport began attracting artists. By the late 1800s, French Impressionism had also crossed the pond, and Rockport's growing community of artists wanted to assert their individuality. There was a conflict between the French Impressionists and the American Impressionists. They didn't want to call it the motif at first, so they, they called it the motive for a long time. And then it started to just go back to being called the motif, but they wanted to make it less French. If initially the pronunciation was intended as a point of distinction, it came to stand for a local Rockport identity. I, th I guess typically throughout history in Rockport, a local says motif and a tourist says motif. I find that motif rolls off the tongue better, so I think that's just why I choose to say that. Um, but back in the day, you could tell a local from a tourist by how they pronounce motif number one. Motif. You ask Kenny Porter, he goes, oh, the motif. You know, that's how he says it. The meaning of the word motif is slightly different in the visual arts, literature, and music, but generally it's a recurring element that has some symbolic significance. Well, it's an icon of the city. It's like any of the arts, a Statue of Liberty or, or you know, a monument in Washington. It's part of Rockport. It's on every calendar and every picture and that. Since the word identity comes from the Latin meaning over and over, it's not surprising that the ubiquitous building, seen from every vantage point in town, is an emblem of identity for Rockporters. Yet there is something about motif number one that transcends boundaries and speaks to people far beyond Rockport. I didn't necessarily know what it stood for or what its significance was. Um, I do remember going on vacation to Florida and we were like, I was probably seven or eight years old and we walk into this um, hotel somewhere and on the wall was a giant mural of the Motif One. So that was the first time uh, I got the idea that this thing was bigger than our little town. And but then I probably had a skewed idea how big it was because I'm looking at my mom going, is this thing on every hotel wall? Indeed. The popular mythology of motif number one is a little skewed in that it leaves out half the story. Motif number one is more than just iconic eye candy for artists. It's also a place where fishermen hone their craft. In fact, the building embodies an age-old motif that is at the heart of most literature, our human need for coexistence and community. There's a shack to house fishing gear. Back then it was cotton fishing gear, so you were always mending it, and cotton rot it, so you are always rot, um, mending the gear and covering it with tar to make it before synthetic lines. Was those days faded out, and the fishermen stopped using that and went to different types of fishing, a bunch of artists rented the building, and they painted in here. And then after the artists fa faded out, I understand if I get it right, the last artist said to the town, gave it back to the town, and said, give it back to the fishermen. In storytelling, the role of motifs is to get your attention, but only as a concrete image of a theme with a deeper meaning. It's not about what it is, it's about what it stands for. It's still a beautiful building on the harbor that is aesthetically pleasing and any artist is going to look at that and go, oh, look at that, that's eye-catching. The real meaning to me is um, in that Rockport was such an important art colony for so long and up until World War II, 
there was transient artists coming here for just the summer and painting every year and you know the um there was boarding houses and the inns and the motels and stuff were here for the artists first oh they're they're waiting for the influx of the artists every year to come paint around town the meaning of a motif can vary based on culture for fishermen motif number one stands for a different history years ago guys would be in here building wooden traps in the winter you don't see that any in fact, I don't even think there is any more wooden traps left. And, and again, it goes back to when this country was founded. I mean, you, what you brought with you was all you had. And you either made it or traded for it. That's when fishermen would salt fish and go to England and trade it for um, goods to come back. They would also go, because they would follow the trade winds, they would end up in the Caribbean. They would trade fish for salt, to salt the fish but also to go to Jamaica and Puerto Rico and pick up molasses, and bring it back to Boston, where they would trade the molasses with Boston Rum Company to get rum, so the boat would come home with furniture from Europe, salt for the salt industry, and they have rum for the season. And they would fish all season, run out of salt, run out of rum, fill the boat up with salt fish, and follow the trade winds back and make the circle. A common motif in literature is the quest. Who hasn't seen their life as a journey to find or save something? Who doesn't love heroes? So the motive saved Rockport. And we started as a fishing community, then shipbuilding, then the granite industry. And by 1910, all of those industries were no longer thriving. And it was the artists who got together, because by 1900 there were as many as 600 artists that would come to Rockport and Gloucester to study uh, painting and to uh, enjoy painting in the summer. And so it was the artists who got together and said, how are we going to enable Rockport to survive? And they had this ingenious idea of creating a float of the motive, a 27-foot model, which um, they put on wheels by motorcycle escort a five-day trip to the Chicago World's Fair. It was entered into a competition of historical floats and it beat out 199 others. And that's what put Rockport on the map for the world as a place to come. In art and life, a motif is a meaningful pattern of images or ideas that when joined together, create a larger work that reinforce a theme. It's not just about the building itself, and it's not just about the natural beauty that surrounds it. It's about the whole of it. It's about the building in relation to all of the community around it, in relation to the ocean beyond it, in relation to the jetty behind it, in relation to the headlands, which is the highest overlook of the town, uh, which gives you a beautiful panoramic view of all the things in the harbor, as well as the Atlantic, as well as the lighthouse beyond, as well as the motive in the center of it all. The consistent presence of a motif serves as a unifying force that threads together a story's theme. I, I do think of it as like a, a, like a unifying force, and it's sort of right in the heart of downtown. Um, it's something that all of us have experienced painting. We have days where we go out and paint it together, like at least a, a handful of us, so it certainly is tied into our experience of being artists, like working artists down here. A fisherman needs something, everybody helps. As a group, when there's a storm and somebody needs to throw a line ashore, guys are helping him. And if you don't have a line, a guy takes a line from his boat and throws it out to help him. That's pretty common amongst fishermen because we're in a little bit of a different group. When you leave this port and go out there, you're in a whole different world. The very nature of a motif means it has longevity as a recognizable symbol. To play its part in a cultural narrative, a motif needs to be a consistent presence. Well, the blizzard of 78 was, you know, it's famous because a couple um, storms came together and become real bad. They had a couple big waves come through, and the building was old. And Whitaker, and he had his boat tied up right here. The wave hit the boat and actually went over the side and laid against his boat. All the breakwaters, a lot of windows, um, the glass shop over here. A lot of shops took a lot of damage from the wave. And it was just a couple big waves from the storm surge. Um, most places have corrected it. We've never had one that bad since then. And it wasn't, the building was non-rebuildable. 
And there's a guy in, here in Rockport, a Vietnam veteran named George Hobbs, who had a construction company, and he built this as a replica. But they built it a lot stronger and better so it would weather another storm. Not that it hasn't taken some storm damage every once in a while, mostly the shingles on the side. And the building's been here since then. It took a couple of years. And they have actually had some problems with this seawall right here deteriorating. They actually jacked the building and brought it up that end of the wharf, repaired it, and then brought it back when they were done. So the building's actually been on a field trip 100 feet and back. <laughs> a motif is not meant to be the focal point of a story, but it can be an essential part of its construction. A theme can be abstract, but a motif is a concrete and tangible. When it was destroyed in the blizzard of 78, uh, my stepfather was um, in charge of gathering together the local contractors and stuff to have the building rebuilt. Um, luckily, a man had taken his time and volunteered years before and actually done perfect architectural drawings of the motif number one. Um, to, to the inch, um, where every beam was and how it was constructed. So they built it the same way, coasted beam. It's not just the same way on the outside, it's the same way. Um, my stepfather managed to salvage a bunch of the beams and the siding, and I grew up and in my living room, the beams on the ceiling above my head were from the motif number one. Yeah. Um, but they moved the beams in there in the winter time, it was the winter, it was the 78, uh, and he happened to be building his house at the same time. But, um, he didn't um, anticipate the fact that there was sleeping, uh, hibernating uh, ants in the beams. So they brought the beams to the house and had them installed, and they all looked beautiful, and all of a sudden it was like, where are all these ants coming from? Motifs are effective because they are recognized as emblematic of some universal truth they signal a widely shared perception. For example, who doesn't associate artists with nonconformity? I went to Rockport High School. My art teacher brought us down here to do, to do some drawings from the, the harbor and stuff. And she said, the one thing you can't paint is the motif one. So she didn't want us to do something that had become so cliche at that point, right? So that was the first time I painted the motif one because I was told that I can't, you know. So I was rebelling. I, I'm going to draw the motif one and anger my art teacher. There was a certain obstinacy in my personality where I was determined that even though I knew it was a rite of passage for artists to paint it, I was determined I was not going to paint it. Um, but that only lasted uh, after we moved here probably for about three or four months. And then I saw it in the light in January with the empty harbor and there was something just that much more compelling about it in that circumstance uh, that made me decide that I was going to paint it. In art and life, we are confronted with the duality that is part of being human. A motif that has endured since the days of Greek mythology is the muse, a force that is a guiding genius inspiring us to be our highest selves. So there's this um, creative tension between needing to be in community but wanting to do things your own way. And, and there's something about Rockport that enables that to happen. At the crux of any story is a problem that needs to be solved. In storytelling, a motif can often encapsulate both the conflict and its resolution. My step-grandfather, Dana Vibert, he ran the Roy Moore Lobster Company. And uh, one year during the winter, um, he put in new tanks to, for the lobsters and they pump water from the harbor and back out and so the lobsters are really fresh and um, he needed power. Well, the nearest source of power was the, was Motif 1. So he had wires run from the Motif 1 over to the Runmore Lobster Company. Well, when the artists arrived in the spring, they were up in arms over the new wires. These ugly wires hanging off the building. So they went up to him and bitched and moaned, you know, about the wires, right? And he said, if you don't like the wires, don't paint the wires, right? He didn't care. He was a fisherman, you know? And uh, so they said, well, what about the photographers, you know? Oh, all right, I guess you have a point. So they fought back and forth over it for a while, and then they came to a uh, creative conclusion was that the artist would dig the trench if he would pay to have the wire moved all the way over to, so so the artist cut down there with shovels and pickaxes and it must have been a nightmare to dig through because that's all 
packed granite shards, basically, from when they made the warp. So they dug the trench, and uh, he ran the wire, and then they formed a committee, I think it's called the Motif Number One Committee, um, that is, that's always got an artist member, a fisherman member, and someone who's neutral. So if they have any issues about what to do with the building, that, you know, someone can, uh, that, that there won't be an argument that doesn't uh, get resolved. Part of being human is to wonder, to explore, to go deeper. To me, it's more than just um, a pretty building. It's symbol. It's symbolic of something greater than what it is. So people come in all the time. They say, "Well, what is it? What, what's in there?" What is in there? As the most painted building in America, the exterior of Motif Number no. One has been contemplated from every possible angle. Yet we found the interior of Motif Number no. One to represent one of the most beloved motifs of all in art and literature, the heart. Here's a peek at the motif's second floor, where a collection resides that is both art and artifact, as well as a monument to the spirit of a community. The most important thing is it's still used by town people. It's a, a used building. It's not just an empty shell that people look at. And it is sort of a, a museum. Jack Burbank, who was a local contractor, local lobsterman, added to it. I've added to it. A lot of other rock porters and Cape Andrews have added to it. It's another piece of history from the town of Rockport. The good friend Bob Smith came up and said, my wife doesn't won't let me hang this in the house. So he left something. And then after that, a lot of friends and even people I don't know started leaving me neat things. And I'll have a little story. We left them on the wall up here. The flag came from Bill Cronin, a retired state police officer. Some of the bottles we found low tide around here. But if you look around, like the paintings over in the corner, and there's one right there, that black and white's a very old painting. Rasden came down one day with that sax, Rick Rasden, and he's a saxophone player. And his good friend was Bobby Hebb. And he's just sitting here, and he says, I want to make sure we put something in the motive. Bobby Hebb played that sax, though. He um, wrote and sang the song Sonny back in the 60s. This is Larry Martin, real name Vladimir Bittman. Larry's a retired KGB agent who defected this country uh, 30, 40 years ago. I'm taught disinformation at Boston University for years till he retired. And that's a painting he painted for in him. So, again, where do you hang some of this stuff? <laughs> and so that's how some of it gets there. We have the um, kids come down from the school. They walk down, I think it's the third and fourth grade. Uh, Miss Kylie, and we bring the kids in here one class at a time. We let them walk through the building. They come up here. I believe they write a story or they do a picture at school about the motor. But they get to come in the building. They look. They most most of the teachers have never been in the building. So the kids have come up here. They all sit around and they look at all this stuff and they ask questions. So when they go back to school. It's not just looking at the outside. They have been in the building. The building has evolved over the years um, to fit modern times. And right now it's um, just kind of a neat place to be. Can a building have a soul? Could it be that motif number one strikes such a chord with people from all over the world because its outside reflects its insides and the inner essence of the Rockport community? Regardless of the atmosphere, the environment, right? The, well, how how crummy the weather is outside. There's always a way where you can see it as beautiful if you choose to. If you go deep and find that inner artist, the day when it's sleeting slush out and it's gray, and and you can go down there on a foggy day and there's that that red poking through. And if you can see it in a different way, and, uh, and I think that's the same for life. You know, it depends on how you look at it. Choice. Over time, Hornby's use of the French word motif has been translated by some to mean cliché and overdone. But the meaning of the word motif is ambiguous, like life. In getting the perspective of some Rockport locals on motif number one, we came away with a sense of meaning that is far from trite. In fact, we would say that motif number one offers a window into some timeless truths about being part of a community.